Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just but, a magnet. Yeah, just a magnet. Come on, Cam, last year we, we said probably 150, mid-150. Yeah. Same Doe from the morning come out with that nine-pointer. Here, here steps out this 90-inch eight-pointer. You're like, <laughs> yeah. ah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then I'll step like another 90-inch eight-pointer. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. You're like. <laughs> I'm like deer right there. Yeah, like and he's 30 already yards. thirty yards. Yeah, he he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been had a buck down at one forty in the afternoon, back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 245, 24 yard shot. Sent the combat veteran, and I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's it's almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you killed that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops for sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast, bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. This is the Whitetail Legacy Podcast coming in your ear holes on this beautiful, sunny, hot summer day. I hope it's, it's raining <laughs> here, but <laughs> wherever you're at, I hope it's better than what we got going on. But we're coming at you, just me and homie, this episode. Uh, we put out a couple posts about some summer scouting. A lot of podcasts are covered in summer scouting right now, and uh, it's a hot topic. But I think there's going to be some stuff in this that you pick up that's going to be a lot different than other people, it's just kind of the me and homie style. Um, we like summer scouting, but we don't put a huge emphasis on it compared to other hunters. But let's get into the people that make this possible, and we'll get into the show. Start up with the VIP. The combat veteran is available. Um, get a hold of Matt and Cindy directly or get it from the website. Um, we just got a couple more packs in the mail. Pretty excited about that. Yeah, We're ready to go for the season. We've got bot arrows, getting our gear in homies buying a bunch of new stuff i'm buying a bunch of new stuff new sights you got new strings new string. on your bow new stand new sticks a lot of new stuff that's kind of like the funnest part of the year say, right trying now is new just stuff. trying new stuff and seeing if it's bogus or if it's solid you know <laughs> what i mean <laughs> so you never really know you you can read all the marketing hype you want, but until you get it in your hand, it's like, ah, this isn't for me. And then you're like, I got to resell this thing. Yeah, but most like, of the time, oh, yes. you can resell it pretty easy. Would, Somebody wants it. Yeah, someone wants it. So someone wants to try it like you did and realize it's broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got the VIP shout out. Yeah, this week's shout out is Hank Brown. And Hank was in the Army for six years and said he has numerous training certificates. So, Hank, we appreciate your service in the Army for the six years that you did. Uh, it's six more than I did, so uh, we definitely appreciate that um, from everybody here at Whitetail Legacy and the VIP family. All right, let's get into ECW calls, all your custom call needs. Check them out at EmbryCustomWoodworking.com. Ingram's Outdoor Obsession. Uh, what do you got over there? You He's got a-, got a little special project. Uh, Logan brought down his buck when he come and towed up our food plot. And he's going to do a pedestal mount because that deer's got uh, kind of a whitish paintbrush mark on his shoulder. But it's not long enough for the pedestal form to reach that hide. So Ingram's got the special task of uh, extending that pedestal form to uh, get that hide on there that's, you know, yeah, really, really Ingram, characteristic Ingram of that buck. Ingram said he was excited to do it. He said it's going to be a challenge to extend that. And then he said that he made a pretty long cut down the deer also. Yeah. So <laughs> he's pretty he's pretty excited about that project. It's going to be cool to be able to get that little marking, that pie ball marking on there. But, yeah, shout out to Ingram. He uh, helped us out with our plots this year, did a bunch of mowing and spraying for us. Um, we appreciate it, man. Solid dude, does solid taxidermy work, and just a good friend. He hung out with a while with us when Logan was here and Nick and everybody. That was just a great time, man. Yeah. We had a blast and uh, look forward to maybe getting him on some public and hunting with him this year. So. All right, coming at you this week with the Exodus Trail Camera Tip of the Week. We're going to talk about setup a little bit. Um, 
this is the time of year that literally everybody's getting their trail cams out pretty much. If not, um, the next couple months, it seems like 4th of July is when I'm like, okay, I celebrated 4th of July. It's time to start really getting some trail <laughs> cameras out for some reason. But, uh, quick little setup tips that we like to do is, uh, we like to get five to 10 yards from where we want the picture to be taken. Um, a lot of times you set your camera up real close to a trail and the closer you are, um, to that trail, the more chance you're going to have to miss the deer or get an, you know, an ass shot or a half rack. There's nothing worse than a half rack shot or a shot where it like cuts the brows off or something that's terrible. And then, um, make sure to not face the sun. This seems like a simple tactic, but this is something I just learned like a few years <laughs> I ago. I say it is terrible. You know, I feel like a lot of people that are running cams, you're like, okay, this is a perfect tree, but make sure and face that north or you know away from the sun as possible even if it the sun setting in the west with a lot of these cameras you're going to get a ton of sun glare pictures and um just an absolute ass load of you know blanks and then the last is something that we are famous for is watch out for limbs or grass um, <laughs> <laughs> those the tree limb picks will absolutely drain a battery in seconds um and go going back to that five to yard, you know, ten yards shot is uh even out to five, ten yards, if you got a that one tree branch we got murdered by was probably five, six yards away and it mm-hmm. just absolutely obliterated. So it was on the top left of the cam, you know, and it's just bouncing in. So that's something to think about. One thing we like to do is if your cam doesn't have a viewing screen, once we hang it that first time, we like to go back out there like a week later and check them and say, Okay, all these are solid. Now we're going to let them set for a month. You know, you don't want to go out there and be like, okay, this is perfect. And you let it set. And for a month, you got blanks or sun picks or something. Go back that first week after letting it run some pictures. And then you know, I need to move it a little bit to the right. I need to cut this limb, et cetera. All right. You got the next level deer supplements. Yeah. This week, uh, next level deer supplements wants to talk about mineral site locations. Um, put mineral site near location of a well used trail. In shady areas are best to keep the dirt from drying out. Um, Also, the more that the deer feel protected, the more they'll visit during daylight hours, which is key. Pouring the mineral on and around old stumps also works well. But try to avoid putting these mineral sites close to cedar or pine trees. The needles that have dropped from the tree make the dirt taste bitter, and it's undesirable to the deer at that point. In sandy soil, try putting the mineral alone or mixed with good soil into a shallow rubber or metal feed pan. Hmm. Lastly, mineral sites will typically be most active during spring and summer, but having mineral available year-round is crucial. In times of stress, a deer will seek out sources of nutrition like mineral sites. I didn't know that about cedar. I bet you there's a lot of people out there that got them, you know, kind of in a cedar bedding area or something. Right. (laughs) They're like, why aren't the deer hitting my mineral? (laughs) (laughs) So much we don't know about the mineral game, but, you know, being with Next Level, we get to learn so much every week when we, when we get these ad reads. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So be sure to check them out at nextleveldeer.com. All right. Let's get into the show. Like I said, this is going to be me and homie. We're going to kind of run down our basics of how we are finding these giant deer. If you know me and homie, Every year we have a absolute giant 170 plus class deer that we are chasing and trying to kill. Um, It's been this way like the last eight years. We've had just an absolute giant that we're trying to hunt. And uh, people are like, a lot of people are like, hey, how do you find these deer? Or what are you guys doing? You got a horseshoe up your ass or et cetera. (laughs) I don't get trail cam picks like that. And a lot of it, you know, it goes back to the stuff we're going to talk about in there. So these steps that you can take that, uh, will help you find these deer they're not everywhere we do live in illinois we are in a good area so we're blessed but very good area when uh when other people don't have them on cam or don't have them to hunt and they're not very far from you you're like man you got them there somewhere it's just you're not you know you're not putting in the extra work to find them so we had some people reach out and say that we needed to do more episodes of info for me and homie we do not feel like we're qualified to give you guys intel that's why we asked for some listener questions to yeah. um to help you guys out that's what we do these episodes for to to help you out and uh hopefully one guy can learn something it's awesome when we get a message it's like hey man i'm learning some stuff you know i'm gonna do this this and this and we start game planning with some guy that messaged on facebook or instagram and it's cool that our 
podcast gives a little bit of knowledge and content to people out there to make them better hunter. But I was saying, I'm glad that we uh, were able to put that post out and get some questions in there because as them questions were coming in, I'm like, man, this is really going to make this podcast extra good yeah extra gooder <laughs> yeah extra gooder <laughs> yeah um you know and usually with our scheduling and the way that it goes and the way that we flow is uh we're not able to do that as much as we'd like to but uh if we do have a couple of these maybe we can do kind of this setup and ask for some more questions like that yeah i like it because it gets the listeners involved you you guys i guarantee you when you're listening you have questions you're like man i hope he asks this i hope he asks this yeah. i hope he answers this so this is There's our times way i'm of, listening i'm like why didn't i ask this yeah, like you want to know while you're listening so this is their way of doing it but uh like i said we're gonna basic break it down and then we'll get into the questions um so for me summer scouting um, for a lot of guys, it's like high, high priority. And for, I could say probably for both of us, right, homie, it's kind of, it's important, but it's not make or break. In the summer? Yeah. Yeah. Like if we, so if we did no scouting from now to August and we started hardcore in August, I would still feel good about it. Yeah. But it's cause we have that past knowledge and we have the, you know, the January, February knowledge. You know what I mean? We learned stuff this year on public in February we were like, can we hunt this area? Is it possible for us to get in this area, mm -hmm. right? And we realized that it was a no. Like, there's no way you can get in there. The terrain is, there's no way to access it. And there's like three stands you could possibly hang. And you're going to have to take a chainsaw with you to get in there. Um, but imagine going out there now. There's no way. You would walk in there, right? And if you got in there, you'd be like, oh, there's a stand. But what's it going to look like in the fall? Yeah. You have no idea. What's it going to look like, you know, late season when you're potentially hunting these deer or when the leaves start falling? You literally have zero clue what it's going to look like. And that's why we put so much emphasis on that the late season scouting over summer scouting. Um, you can see the sign better. You can see the beds. You can see the tracks. You can see where they've been hopping a fence all season. With the grass growing up, like a lot of areas we hunt is overgrown pasture. And with the grass growing up now, you can't see those areas like you can late season. I mean, you can maybe be able to see an old rub or something, but those old rubs, we don't put a lot of, we're like, oh, cool, there's a rub there. We <laughs> yeah. don't put a lot of like, you know, chalk into like, okay, yeah, there's a buck. Like those rubbing posts. Mm -hmm. There's rubbing posts out there and they're just destroyed. Like they've been rubbed on for years and years and years. But I guarantee you, if you put a cam on that, you're going to get like two bucks in daylight all year. Yeah, it's, it's going to be nocturnal. It's because just it's all nocturnal sign. And that's something that we've learned throughout the year. But And I feel like going back to what you were saying there about deer jumping the fence and stuff, you know, in, in the winter time or that early spring, is the ground is very saturated. So that sign's going to be more prevalent. But now, you know, you could be in a drought in some areas of the country. And that sign's not going to be there because it, it's dry, you know, yeah. it's not getting beat up. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can tell a little bit, but like when we walked back there this year on the public and we were like, okay, this is like the heaviest crossing. This is where most of the does are crossing, we feel like. And then we found that other one. We we're like, well, they're crossing here some, but nothing like back there. Yeah. If you went out there now, the grass is three, four foot tall. You're not going to be able to dictate you could tell they're both crossings but you can't tell which one is the primary and which one is the secondary exactly so but yeah that, that late season scouting is key but to get into what we do for summer scouting this is what i like to do one i like to hang my cams in my areas that i know are traditionally good to get the pictures to see if my bucks are still alive that's my main goal like i'm not targeting deer right now in the summer I guess I am targeting deer, but I'm not targeting to hunt them. I'm not going to hunt that area more than likely. I'm just saying, okay, I've got pictures of this buck the last two years in this area in the summertime. This is where I'm going to hang a cam to see if he comes back. And then that's the most exciting part for me during the summer scouting is it's cool to see how big they get, but it's just cool to see, okay, okay, I got Magnum back. Okay, I got Westside back. We got Chaos back. Mm -hmm. Like when you get that buck, then you're like, okay, now I got all this past history that I can use against this Joker and try to say, okay, he's here again. So more than likely he's going to leave October 18th or something. We're not going to get any more picks like TT. Or, um, but that's what I'm doing right now with my trail cams. We can't run mineral or any bait here. So we're doing it off of field edges, 
off of pinch points, off of spots that we know that these deer are using, going back into bedding areas. And I bet you that we miss a ass load of deer. Like there's just no way not to get them. I feel like if you had a mineral or a bait site, you're pretty much going to get a picture of the buck if he, if he's alive. You know what yeah. I mean? Eventually throughout the year. is he? Are you going to be able to hunt him later? No. But you're going to at least get a picture of him to say, okay, this deer is still alive. He's still around in this area. And but with us, I feel like sometimes we don't get pictures of our deer until late and we're like oh shit it's still still alive you know what i mean and the whole time when you don't get him through the summer you're like okay he's dead you know he didn't make it you know what i mean so i was gonna say we still had that buck that or what we think is a buck i mean the head was cut off yeah you know right next to the highway is kind of where we hunt and we still have no idea what deer that was because yeah. i mean i was it was laying there it was the body yeah there's a buck that got hit directly north of where me and homie hunt on private and it was a big body and we were like okay that's one of our <laughs> yeah targets, and head's cut off I mean. you know what i mean and so then you have like then all you know it's late season so you're not getting a lot of pictures of bucks anyway so you're like which one was he you know what i mean so right. and chances are around here you know somebody's not cutting off the head of a fork and horn no yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean it's someone's someone's got a salvage tag and they're getting a euro or something you yeah. know what i mean so um, a lot of deer hunters around this area so but uh another thing that we like to do summer scouting is scout for people we say that a lot but you can tell in summer scouting if there's someone out there, he's probably pretty serious. If it's 90 degrees out and there's a dude out there, just like when we seen that cam in the back, mm -hmm. we were like, okay, this dude is serious. This is a person that we're going to have to hunt with all year. He's not backing down. He's got a cam this far back. He set it up in between these two weeks when it's 90 degrees out. He went through the same stuff to get back here as we did. Yeah. Absolutely brutal. You know what I mean? Cockaburs <laughs> in my ass crack. You know what I mean? Like, um, so you, so scout for people, if there's someone out there summer scouting and he's got cams up in a certain area, more than likely he's going to be hunting that area. And that's not a, that's not a reason to back down from that area, but you just have to start thinking, how is he going to access? He's going to be pulling these cams. So he's going to be putting pressure on this area. Mm -hmm. I wonder how long he's putting cams. I probably shouldn't put cams around his cams because there's a potential for theft. We had multiple cams get messed with last year. Um, so you got to start thinking about that. Um, and I feel like summertime is the time that cams get stolen. It's either summer or late season when people are walking around looking for sheds right. that, uh, that cams get, get swiped. So, but just like you said, you know, if you see that guy out there, you know, now's the time to be able to approach him yeah. and, you know, see if he, see if he can start a friendship, see, you know, if you can get his game plan, um, kind of share yours. So you guys aren't tromping all over each other and, uh, you know, hopefully you can start a relationship and um you know sort of work together because we ended up kind of working with yeah. with everybody that was going back there yeah we kind of worked with and they were like hey we're gonna be we're taking vacation and we're gonna be hunting back there And we kind of did our vacation opposite of his vacation to kind of you know break up the monotony because he's he ended up hanging a stand 150 yards from us mm -hmm. you know eventually and uh when you're in the right spot you're in the right spot and there's yeah. nothing we can do with public land man you yep. know so so he's there you know and that's something that you just have to do and he's a solid dude you know you're not you don't want to call him out or, you know, make a scene. And he has just as much right to be there yeah. as us. And he put in the work to run cams back there. And he's getting the same pictures of bucks that we're getting. So that's why it's so funny when people are like, oh, this buck's hidden. No one knows. <laughs> Pretty much someone knows. If it's a giant, someone knows about that dude. Yeah. Like there's people that have got pictures of him or every Legend episode we do. I always ask, is there anything else you learn? And they're like, oh, yeah, neighbors had sheds from them they won't tell anybody about. They had pictures of them they won't tell anybody about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone out there knows that that deer is alive. Well, especially in Magnum's running around two yeah. and a half mile radius. Yeah, you know, Magnum's, you he's know, everywhere. the 170 we were chasing last year, he's he's two and a half miles on cam in the same year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, and then the year before that, I got him on trail cam in the summer, and he's- Three miles. Three miles. You know what I mean? So, um these deer travel a lot, and for that, someone to get a picture of them is pretty, pretty common, I think. But we still want to think that they're hidden. But yeah, most I would of the say time we know not. we know two other people that had them on cam. Yeah, so, so that's two people that we talk to. So, how many people <laughs> have them on cam that we don't talk to? You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, another thing that we're doing is we liked to scout off the road, and I know a lot of people do this. Um, it's harder than what you think. People are like, "Oh yeah, I'll go to this field, I'll glass." Last year, I was glassing an absolute mega, and um, there's some tips that 
I think that you need to do, you need to park in a different area than you're glassing for one. Um, I think that's huge. A lot of people like pull into on the side of the road and glass and around here, everybody's got a hunting sticker in their back window. You're like, Oh, I know what that guy's doing. He ain't getting out to take a pee. You know what I mean? He's, he's glassing something out in this field. And then two days later you go out there and do the same thing. And yeah. I had this happen to me. I was parked out there and they see my truck. And then Dennis was like, Hey man, I seen a giant out in that field. I was like, oh, yeah, my truck there was probably the signal for him to start looking out in the field to. So then I was like, I got a high. So I parked it at the Milroy place and was walking up in mm-hmm. there and, I'd have people stop and just talk to me about all kinds of stuff, you know, just wanting to hang out. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to watch this deer. <laughs> so so uh, that's one thing we like to do. And just for tips of that, for us, it's bean fields or hay fields. Um, and it's late evening. And it seems like if you have a rainstorm coming in and that cold front's coming in, you get that colder temps, those deer are going to move a lot earlier. That's my favorite time to come. I think if it's raining, I think the beans like hold some moisture or something and they don't maybe have to go and get water as far or as often. So they want to go out there and get those greens when they're wet. So I have really good success glassing when it's wet. And then also if it is raining, if it's not a heavy rain, most time there's people not going to be out. People don't like to get wet. So that's a time you can kind of slip out and and glass some of these fields without people seeing you. Because that's the number one thing on public. Like you, you don't want people to know where you're hunting. Or, because if you're spending, you're going back there glass three or four days, they're like, man, there's something back there. This dude's been yeah. going back there for three weeks, you know what I mean? So, but that's not something that we put a huge, a lot of time in, you know? Um, At that point, it's just like making you feel good that, yeah. you know, you, you got a buck in the area that you yeah. could possibly hunt. Now, this is, our season starts October 1st. So, if our season started September 15th, glassing would put a, it would be completely different. It would be a game changer. Or like if we had Kentucky dates, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you are in Kentucky, you ought to be glassing hay fields and bean fields like a mug. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you can hunt so early that um, that's something that we can't do. You know, October 1 is when we can hunt. The beans are brown. If they're not brown, they're turning brown. You know what I mean? I'm going to say September for us is just such a game changer. Yeah. Like the deer change so much in that three mm-hmm. weeks. From the that- 15th. From like the seventh to the thirtieth, it's yeah, like it's, pff, it's start over. You know what I mean? Everything in the summer is almost gone. Yeah, so um, that's why we don't put a huge emphasis on summer scouting. But if you're in a state that you can hunt earlier, I think it you really need to put a lot more work into summer scouting. Yeah, because they're still going to be on their yeah, patterns. They're going to be on those patterns. They're still going to be feeding them fields. Our west side was out in that field opening evening of. The Tennessee, Can, yeah, the early, Tennessee early archery, I'm, yep. and I'm glassing. I'm like, dude, if I could, if I could hunt right now, I'd be hanging a stand right there. It'd be perfect wind. This deer would be dead, twenty five yard shot. Yeah, you know I mean? and then we would have double bucked on chaos and TT on yeah. the private. You know, at twelve oh eight in the afternoon. Yeah, you know what yeah, I, mean? I mean. So it just just goes to show you that different season, different states with different. St- start a season you can listen to a podcast but the tactics might be completely different than what you need to be doing so we wanted to state that that we do do some summer glassing and we got a couple questions about that that we're going to hit a little more but we don't put a huge effort into that um another thing that we like to do is a lot of people say you need to get on the ground and scout get in there and do it if we're on the ground scouting we are hanging cams or hanging stands that's when i'm doing my scouting i'm not making special trips in in there in the summer we did last year, but we went into a brand new area. I feel like if you went into a brand new area, but we were going back there. We hung there, cams, though. We hung cams. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're we're trying to utilize hanging cams. But, I mean, just that time we were we were on the whole parcel. Yeah. You know, we were in that whole area. Uh, we weren't just, you know, in and out like we were checking cams. So we, we were trying to learn back there, you know, because it was first time going back in there. And so that was like our maiden voyage back there, hanging cams and seeing um, what areas we could hang and get into. Yeah, because I'd been back there scouting in the, in the winter, but I hadn't really scouted like trees to hang stands in, right. et cetera. I was just scouting our deer are using this area. Does it look like there's a lot of buck sign? You know, is there doe bedding, et cetera, stuff like that. And then we went back in there the summer, kind of picked some trees and hung, hung cams. That, and, that saved us the first time yeah, back there. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Cause first time back there, couldn't hunt one. And if we would have, that'd have been the first time back there, we'd have been like, well, what are we going to do? We had an idea where we could go 
and then we went there and it worked out, you know, and it yeah. ended up being one of our best, it was the best stand of the year. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, what else, what else you got? What else are you thinking? Um, one thing we like to do also is we like to utilize bikes. There's a lot of access summertime. Um, we like to utilize the bikes on the private or the public cause you can't, um, just cause we can cover more ground. There is a lot of hikers and bikers out there. There's a lot of guys fishing out there. A lot of, um, there's a lot of human scent in the summertime out in that area. Um, on the private during the summer, I like to utilize my truck. There's going and pulling cams. I will drive my truck right out there. We've seen deer hit the mobile cam 15 minutes after my truck has left. You know what I mean? And that's something that we kind of like to do with our cam setups on our private, we like to run our mobiles where you pretty much can't get them without pressure and stuff. And the ones, the other ones, we just like to pull up and <laughs> pop out the truck and grab yep. them. You know what I mean? It, it's for ease. It's because all our kids want to go too. So we can yeah. bring them along in the truck. And also it's lower scent. I feel like if a deer sees a truck, they're not as spooked as a human. And uh, we're not walking through the whole thing. And I, I don't know, like, if a deer smells exhaust or if a deer smells a human, you know, walking, what the difference is. But I know that by our mobile cam data that, and I'm sure the same thing goes for a side-by-side or a four-wheeler or just like O-Town, you know, that was mm-hmm. a dirt bike track, you know, and yeah. he was in there. So Right. I, and I, you also have everything right there in your truck. I can usually yeah. get everything from my house to the truck, but usually from the truck to get into a trail camera if I walk there... Uh, you know, I, then I start batteries. getting jacked up. Yeah, if you know? you're out of batteries, you're like, fuck, I got to walk back to the truck now, <laughs> get batteries, and walk back out there. Yeah. The truck's right there. But during, you know, the public, we're utilizing backpacks and and bikes, you know what I mean? We utilize the bikes out there a lot because yeah, we, there is a kind of a gravel bike trail through part of the public. I'm saying we, we take our time a little bit more on public, think things through, be sure we got everything, double check. We probably need to start doing that yeah. a little better on the private. It's just because it's so big. Like when you go to this public, you're dedicating that day. Yeah, or like it's, it's the a, whole morning. The whole morning's gone. You know what I mean? When you go to the private, it's like, I'm going to go check cams in 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Like yep. it's just different because the private's 38 and the public's 3,000. You know what I mean? Like it's it's hard to uh, – it's hard to – I also feel like we tiptoe a little bit more on the private. Yeah. You know, than we do the public, which, you know, is... You got to, man. Yeah. Because we were just talking here early. We feel like the public ground in the summer, there's guys out there biking. There's guys out there walking around with his kids. There's frog diggers. There's fishermen. There's there's lakes out there. There's people bouncing around fishing the lakes. There's bike paths. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. People riding their horses out there. People bailing hay out there. Yeah, the, you know, I'm, the farmers and farmers are out there planting and... crops. They're mowing trails. There's just a lot going on in the summertime. When the Dove fall, hunters. yeah, when the fall's there, you know, there's not a lot of people out there unless you're musky fishing or... I would say like third week of September, it starts becoming a ghost town, yeah, you know? you know, but before that, there's a lot of people out there and we feel like we you kind of utilize that because we feel like these deer on public, at least where we hunt, I feel like they're used to human scent a little more. Now, not saying that during deer season if they smell you, they're it's like a slingshot. Yeah, they're still that. gone. <laughs> but but uh, I feel like during the summer we don't we're not doing anything scent wise in the summer because by the time we get back there we are so soaking wet, sweating. You know, in Illinois, like it gets. 95 ish you know 96 that's like maybe 100 some days of the year but about the same percent of humidity (laughs) yeah but high humidity so you take 25 steps you're sweating (laughs) so for us to do anything scent related um during the summer is pretty much out of the question um we do kind of wipe down our cams a little bit but i don't know what that really does by the time you get it back there but um we, another thing we do in the summer is we like to try to shoot for the rainstorms again to pull yeah. these cams and to hang them. Um, kind of sucks getting wet. Um, as long as it's a light rain, I feel like then for one, it's cooler. For two, your scent maybe washes off the cam. I don't think you're getting it all off the ground. When that possum winded me or ground, ground <laughs> sent me last year, I was like, man. I got to step my game up. (laughs) Possum runs right into your trail and turns around. You're like, wow, this possum just got me. A buck's going to be gone 200 yards away. Right. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's funny that the more and more we get into it, the less and less we get away from scent. 
how we can change it because we just figured you just can't beat it. There's just no way. So, so you got to pay attention to the wind and, yeah. and your thermals. What else you think? Summer scouting. I mean, we covered, you know, we'll, we'll kind of talk about where we're setting our trail cams up a little bit. I briefed on it, but um, I'm setting my trail cameras up on ag areas, beans in specific, or hay fields um, that I have had deer in in the past. Um, this year while I'm hanging a cam, I'm, did a, I did an Instagram live and there's a giant running away from the, in the bean field while I'm going in there to hang the cams. You know what I mean? So that's probably a pretty good place to hang a cam, you know, and, and, uh, never did get that buck on camera, but got other bucks, you know? And, uh, if you see a lot of deer when you're glassing or something, hang some cams, even if it's does, if there's does in the area during the summer, more than likely there's bucks in the area. And when you find the bucks, they're all grouped up most of the time. So you're going to be able to be like, okay, here's a batch of group over here. Here's a batch of group over here. And you'll be able to get a lot of intel off a couple cams. But we base so much off of past history, or at least I do, of where I've got pictures in the summer. And then crop rotation, they go corn, beans, corn, beans here a lot. Sometimes they do corn, corn, and then a beans. But I'm always on the bean fields. The corn fields early season, I have very little luck. That's where one of the pictures of Magnum's off of, though, mm -hmm. um, is right on the edge of a, a cornfield. But uh, I think he was actually crossing the road to get to the beans on the private is what I think he was doing. Yeah, I feel like if you are limited to the corn to a cornfield right now, like the deer are going to be bedding in there. Uh, we've seen that there with mm -hmm. freeze. Um, you're just going to have to be right at the point that they're entering and exiting that field. I like I like the fields that have the grass buffer yeah if it has a grass buffer i feel like you get a lot better trail cam pictures and uh because they like to work that they, edge they like to eat that grass work that edge they get a little more airflow through there um and another place that i like to hang them is in have in thick oak timber um we have found that um in thick oak timber with big oak trees that there's low underbrush it's kind of open and you get a lot of airflow through there. So if it, during the summer, year after year after year, right on that edge of where the thick stuff starts and that openness is, we get pictures of bucks. Whether it's the openness to a CRP field, the openness to a heavy oak timber, I feel like they like the air flowing through there. They like the shade, um, and they they don't mind being seen this time of year as much as they do because. When late season hits, they are not in those areas. No. They are not in that open oak timber that you can see 400 yards and you imagine a giant cruising over the hill. You're like, oh, <laughs> this is an epic spot right on this ridge. They're just not there for us. But during the summer, they're always there. Yeah. And that's how we based our trail cameras. Like when I was hunting freeze, I told homie, okay, beans on the south. He's going to be on the south. Hung a cam. Three days later, boom, got a picture of him. Um, same thing with uh, TT, beans. This year, Magnum was on the beans. They switched the beans. I got to move my camera about 400 yards down further. He's going to be there, hopefully. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So if they rotate those beans, be keen on that. If, Like I said, ag fields, hay fields. Another thing that I like to do is if you can scout the private off of the public – which seems weird. Don't don't go on the private. You know what I mean, <laughs> go to the fence line. Look over there. Does this guy have a food plot? Does this guy have, you know, you're in a state where you can bait. Does he have a mineral lick over there? Does he have something that's going to draw these deer in this area? And run a cam there. There's nothing wrong with you running a cam close to private. We do it multiple times. You know, some of our best stands are 200 yards off private, mm -hmm. and uh, we run cams like eight ones on like 80 yards off private. You know, I mean, where they're coming off the private on the public, and um, that's something I think a lot of people overlook is if you can walk the edges of your private, and you're like, okay, this guy's got a clover field over here, these deer are probably going to be coming in over, or he, this guy's got a feeder here. You know, these these deer probably might be bedding over here. I'll run and run a cam in between this feeder and utilize what other people were doing. Um, we do that on the private, just to the south of us on the pri on the public. They got food plots, corn fields, bean fields. We run cams off of them, and we catch these deer coming off of those fields. You know what I mean? And if you didn't walk all the way back there, you wouldn't know. You'd see an ag field on 
Map. Onyx or maps, but you wouldn't know if they leave it standing or they take it down. Mm-hmm. But we know they leave it standing all year round. So that's something we utilize and say, okay, we know this is going to be a, an ag field. This is going to be a clover field. We're going to utilize that and run cams off that because we can't mineral or bait here. So we have to, we're using other people's stuff, but it's all free. It's all fair game out there on yeah. public land. So, all right. I think that about covers everything I wanted to talk about. You want to get into some of the questions? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, we'll start off here with an uh, Instagram question. This is coming in from O Town Outdoors. Of the target bucks you find over the summer, what percentage go off grid and you are unable to find or relocate once the season starts? And then any tips or advice for minimizing this percentage, uh, trail cameras, or larger parcels of land? Uh, that was my first uh, idea when I read that question was sometimes you just need more land. Like, yeah. you know, we're only limited to 40 acres of the private and, you know, the buck that we had early season last year and then uh, was gone for a month, come back through uh, right before season and was gone the rest of the time is is TT, uh, giant nine-pointer. What do you think it was last year? High 160s, probably. Yeah. Giant trash pointer. Browse. Yeah, browse. And, um, you know, we just didn't have enough land to keep trailing back to where he was going. Yeah. So then with the buck, the neighbor shot on the same property. Yeah. He shows up during season. Three days in a row. Three days in a row and then disappears. And we're like, okay, where'd he go? And then the neighbor shoots him 250 yards into his property off of ours but we didn't get a trail cam picture of him the whole time yeah or 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 summer or any time you know and it it might just be the deer aren't hitting the damn cam yeah i would say that probably 60 percent of our bucks leave would you say that's fair i was thinking like leave the area that they're in maybe not leave where we know where they're going to be but they leave the area that they're in in the summer in the summer yes yeah yeah but so what we've done is on the Publix, most, all the Publix, they're giant pieces, right? So public land normally is a giant piece. So we run these cams, and then we get a picture of them, and we're like, holy shit, that's that deer I had over here. Mm-hmm. And then two summers from now, he's doing the same exact thing he did. We just still can't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the same exact thing he did. He's summering over here. Maybe he's a little bit off because of crop rotation, but then we find him. And then, okay, now he's back over here. So I think more ground's huge. More cameras... I, I'm huge on cameras, man. I like a, a, running a lot of cameras, but if the deer ain't there, you ain't going to get pictures of them. Yep. So you can run more cams, but especially if you're in a bait state, if you're not getting that deer on bait or mineral and you're not pressuring it a lot, don't. He's not there. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. all I can say. I just feel like he's not there. We know guys that get pictures of giants every day, all year, <laughs> all summer on bait over and over and over and i'm like dude if i get two pictures in the summer of a buck that i'm hunting i am jacked (laughs) if i had everyday pictures i would go insane i would go insane if i had if he was just out there and i couldn't hunt him and then to be like i don't know if i can kill this deer yeah what what do you what (laughs) (laughs) um just to minimize that is like we we check cams you know once a month you know we pick a weekend day we go After out that there. First check, yeah, that first check is yeah, crucial. F- first check to make sure everything's solid, and then we wait a month. And I know this is another question later on. Mm-hmm. You know, we wait a month, and it, most times, you know, about a month, and we just stay out. Yeah, we run big SD cards, and then another thing is we're not getting fifty pictures of a doe because she's not setting on a mineral, or not setting on mm-hmm. a corn pile, or whatever. So we don't get as much pictures as a guy that might bait. You know what I mean? So. Um, that's something we're able to do. We're able to run it for a month and be like, we might have 400 pictures on there. 500 picks. It looked yeah. not 5,000. Yeah. So that's something that we're able to do. Um, just run, you know, good batteries and uh, good SD cards and you'll be able to not have that problem. But all right, I'm going to take a Facebook question here. I'm going to get one from Jeremiah. Shout out to him, man. His pictures are getting pretty pretty solid yeah Um, look up uh twisted mountain imagery on facebook i'm really enjoying his content so another one of the same kind of questions he says once they shed velvet and enter pre-rut you notice summer bucks disappearing and new bucks moving in and he said i still run cams and enjoy watching them grow but i seldom can count on seeing the same buck in the summer during hunting season 
same thing for us, man. Like I said, the only thing that you can do is kind of spread it out a little bit. If you're stuck on a private piece, um, it's just how it is, man. Uh, that's why I said we don't put a huge emphasis on summer scouting, summer trail cameras, because 60% of the bucks that you're going to get excited about are going to leave. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and since he drug that out to the pre-rut, like, you know, we'll have bucks in September, early September, before they shed, and then they'll shed. They'll leave for probably the rest of the month. You know, that we've had that happen numerous times, and, you know, that's when we start freaking out. We're like, shit, season's a week away. Shit, season's two days away. You know, we still don't have any bucks on cam. And then... As the pre-rut comes in, we've started shifting our cams back around, getting ready to get on the scrapes, and uh, that's where we can get back on some deer and, you know, get get feeling good again. Yeah. All right, go to Instagram question. Yeah, the, this one comes in from Byron Horton. He wants to know a top few tricks for farm country cams and glassing, uh, something quick and easy, something next level. <laughs> Um, my next level tip would be when you're glassing to hide your damn vehicle, <laughs> because like I said, around here, a lot of deer hunters and, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of people just wanting to chit chat and see what you're doing pulled over the side of the road. A lot of these farmers ain't got nothing to go, nothing to do anyways. So like, oh, I wonder what that guy's parked there. He's been parked there the last four days. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, and another thing I'd like to throw out there is. Don't overlook the hay fields. I feel like a lot of people overlook the hay fields around here. And um, on our private, there's a lot of hay fields. Down south, I always drive past that one out by Oak Run, full of deer. Uh, and it's someone's private, you know what I mean? No mm -hmm. one ever out there glass. And I'm like, they utilize these hay fields in the summer, especially after that fresh cut, that, you know, that second or third cut of the year. I like to get out there. And if you've got some rain and get some fresh growth, they're going to be out there. So that's something I like to do. Um, on the east side of our west side of our public, there is some hay fields. I told homie, I went back there in glass. I seen some does coming out. I picked out a couple of trees while glass. And that's something a lot of people do is they're like, okay, I'm out here glass and I'm looking for deer. I'm looking for trees. I'm looking for other trucks. I'm looking for, okay, um, here's this bean field that I do not want to walk across. <laughs> I'm glassing around like, okay, there's a waterway where the beans aren't going to be growing. I can cut half this field off by walking in that waterway, not have to walk. I can walk in the grass. It's probably mowed because all farmers around mm -hmm. here have nothing to do. So they're <laughs> mowing their waterways. I can walk through that mowed waterway for three quarters of this bean field instead of walking all the way across it. So if a buck comes out in a field when I'm glassing, I'm thinking, how would I kill this deer if I could hunt right now? You know what I mean? So I'd come in this way. I'd hang here just like when west side was out there i'm like man if i could come in hang i need to be out there at this time because he'd been coming out and uh for an early season guy that would be huge if you had all those pieces put together on how you're going to access what time you need to be there when they've been coming out i mean what wind direction you think he's you need to utilize for the field a lot of stuff you can do other than just looking for deer um a lot of that stuff we can't utilize but what was the beginning question uh Farm country cams, cams, which I was going to hit a couple. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, if you have a mix of UV and black flash cams, uh, put them UV cams out on that field edge. That white is going to be able to reflect a deer if it's out on the edge more because it is um, open. And use them black flash cams in the timber. Uh, one, it's not going to reflect off the trees as much. And uh, two... Uh, be able to get more light in the yeah yeah, yeah better on the pictures. field yeah nothing better than a blown out nighttime pick where you really can't see right what the deer is because it's picking up so much light on that flash um one thing i'd like to say about farmland cams is people overlook fence lines way too much i feel like if if there's a fence line that splits two fields deer utilize that a lot and then if you have that grass buffer around a field whether it's 10 foot 15 foot run cams around on that grass buffer edge. A lot of times a farmer gets to like a wet spot or something and they can't can't put crops in or they got a waterway or something. I like to run cams right there. One, it's easier for me to access. And then two, I don't have corn six foot away from my camera while I'm trying to get pictures on the edge of this mm -hmm. field. So that would be hopefully some next level tactics <laughs> for them that I like to do. One thing also about the field is I like to be in the corner 
of the yeah. field. And if there is a low spot or, you know, that waterway is usually yeah, in that low tip. spot, yeah. I like to be down in there. I feel like they like to come out there, you know, um, enter that low spot, kind of get out there, be, get used to being out there. And then they can, you mm-hmm. know, if, if you're in the bean field, obviously the corn, you're going to lose them, but, um, like to be in that little low spot there or in the corner. Yeah. That's a good tip. They always seem to come out in the corner or like you said, a low spot and, uh, to get pictures of them. I've never ran a, I've always run them on a fence line. Like if there's a cornfield next to a timber line, I've always run them towards the timber away from the corn or into the CRP or into the grass away from the corn instead of timber to corn. You know what I mean? That's what I've always done. And I've had better success, I think. Mm, or it's try just, to get down that, looking yeah, down that look buffer. Down the, like down the buffer. So, All right. Let's get into a Facebook question. We'll cover the fence question in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Charles from the Whitetail Distraction Podcast um, says, Do you guys have any property where you need to walk down a trail or through timber to access a field? And will you scout these hidden fields in the summer? Um, we have some that that we uh, that we glass on um, public, um, but it's right off bike trails, and that's kind of how I utilize it. Use the bike, go down the trail. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there, anyways. And uh, when I'm glassing, I, I think I glass a lot further away than most people do. I feel like like there's no way I could film what I'm glassing. Like you see a lot of people they're filming the deer that they're glassing. Mm-hmm. I'm normally a long ways away where if I filmed it, it'd be like a dot on my camera. You just but, like solid buck. Yeah. You know. you know, you can tell it's a solid deer. I just feel like if you're further away, you're on a high point, you're not going to pressure those deer. You're going to get a better idea of where they're at. And uh, sometimes you get lucky and you find one that's easy to glass. And Yeah, I like to put a lot of emphasis on being on that high point because everything around here is just so rolling or, you know, they're always come out in that back hidden corner that's down angled into the timber. So that's how we're utilizing keeping our scent away. We're just trying to glass a little further away. And then you always, even when you're glassing, you got to think about the wind. Um, like I said, I like to go on those those rain fronts coming in. Um, I think that you get a direct wind that at that time because the front's coming in. The wind's probably higher, a little higher, so you're not getting that swirly summer wind. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he said, do you ever hang elevated or scout prior to season? I do not hang any stands and, and watch them before season. No. Nope. Um, the only thing I do do is I like to get elevated – when I glass, but I'm not hanging a stand. I'm just trying to go to the highest point, um, get up on a hill, stand on the top of my truck, whatever it takes to get to the highest point and glass, glass when I'm trying to glass. But I've never hung a stand and before season in glass an area. But I could see how that would be huge if you could hunt early season to hang a stand and just say, just to see if it would work. But I'd be scared I'd bump something. With us, it's like when you're hanging a stand, you're going in there to kill. You know what I mean? Right, so. right. I would say I've, I've never um, hung preseason. And then we talked to Ethan Featheroff on the first Legends episode, and he did that quite a bit. And he said the deer actually got onto him mm-hmm. because he was doing it repeatedly. So, yeah. All right, you got an Instagram question? Instagram question? What was the second part of that after? The hanging, hanging elevated prior to season and then how to keep sin away and not pressure your deer. Okay. Especially on public where motor vehicle is not allowed. Right. I, you use a bike, man. Get a bike. Yeah. Low key underrated. Get a kid hauler like I got. You can buy those things for twenty bucks off Facebook Marketplace. You can haul a stand, stick, bow, cameras, backpack, everything you want in that thing. It drags you down a little bit, but it ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're going uphill for three, it just four miles. Looks like you just look redneck as hell out there. <laughs> hauling the kid hauler with a bunch of tree stands in it and stuff, but it works. All right, this comes in from First Gen Bow Hunter. What summer trail cam locations do you look for on a new hunting property? What is your trail cam soak time for a new spot, three days, or like a week? So, uh, like we said before, you know, we like we love the bean fields uh, for the summertime, and then also them fence crossings where you hopefully got out there. I know you said a new spot. Um, you know, we were able to get on a new spot and, uh, get out there still late season, late season scouting and, uh, 
you know, you get out there where you can see them fence crossings. Yeah, when I one thing I like to look for is also is like a fence gap or like the cedar tree gap on that corner. If you if it just looks like a spot that deer are going to utilize to get to an ag field, um, we normally hang a cam there. You know, what I mean, and then we realize that there's a littler gap just to the yeah. east of there that they're utilizing more. You know, what I mean, but yeah, when I read that question, I was thinking of exactly that that corner there. You know, it's just that little pinch, that little natural pinch. Um, that you can see them deer working right through. Yeah, and then for the first time set, like I said, we like to hang it five days a week. Go check it, make sure everything's good to go. And then if you can't hunt early September or something, just let that thing soak. If you're not planning on making moves on these deer, you know, if you're in a new area and you want to see if there's deer there to maybe potentially hang some stands, that's different. But we just like to let those things soak for a month and then, we just like to pull them right before season. I think because we've put so much weight on our late season scouting that we've got a pretty good idea of where we're going to hunt, kind of how we're going to hunt it, what wind and whatnot. Um, we really just need that cam to be solid and taking picks when it's supposed to be taking picks. Yeah, and make sure something hasn't radically changed. That's yeah. what we're looking for. We're looking for radical change where Buck's moved in out of nowhere and he's daylight and for some reason, and which never happens. And, uh, <laughs> and then we can go in there and kill him, you know what I mean? So the only buck that that's ever happened is Sunshine, and that's the reason he's named Sunshine because he's in the <laughs> daylight more than any deer I've ever seen in my life. But uh, all right, we'll go with Garrett. Um on Facebook, it's Heikes. Heikes. Heikes, yeah. We just had him on, man. Chasing the dream. Chasing the dream. Since you're not allowed to use mineral sites, what are your strategies and locations for getting summer velvet picks? We kind of covered that already. Look for pinch points. Um, one thing I've never thought, think that we've, we ne- we don't hang any cams over water. I was thinking about that today. Like, I don't know how much they utilize water. I did last year. I did. Remember when I, at the creek crossing, and I never got a oh, picture yeah. of a deer drinking in that thing. Nope, never got a picture of a deer drinking. Nope. Did, got a doe family group, and yeah. that was about it. Yeah, so, yeah, um, just the pinch points, bean fields, uh, those fence, those fences that have trees in them that are separating the fields, and those grass buffers is where we're running the cams. Easy access. And then another thing about summer cams that we haven't really – talked about is we hang our cams we have a lot of cams so we hang our cams that are going to be during november we hang them now like we're hanging them now and just let them be there and we know the summer picks aren't going to be that good yeah but it's just like we can't hunt early season so we're just putting it there seeing if anything radically changes in that area and get ready to get good picks in a month you know what i mean like that that's where our mindset of you know this is a marathon we're trying to just see if this spot's going to be good and see if it's good all year, see if it's good at the beginning of the year, see if it's good, you know, during the rut, late season, whatever it is, because we left that cam on the road. Mm-hmm. And now we know, hey, all these deer come from this way. So at the end of October, if we haven't killed then, we need to just keep shifting east. In that direction. Yeah. So yeah. Um, just kind of goes off your mind frame of, what you're trying to gain, what intel you're trying to gain from that camera. All right, you got an Instagram question? Yeah, uh, bjohnson65, how to manipulate your access routes on small parcels if you can only enter from one direction? That's That's, a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. If you got one direction, um, I just make sure to uh, always watch the wind when you're going in there and try to utilize those rainstorms when it comes in to go in there and kind of knock down knock down that scent um having one direction on a small property small property is something that we're very familiar with um but we always find a way to get in from the other side we ask the neighbor if we can walk across the field um hell the neighbor let us drive halfway across the field now so you get that relationship started and eventually may get a little better um ask around and maybe you can knock on a door like homie did and hell it's like three properties away from where you can hunt and you got to walk a little far, but it's way closer than what you would. It's straight shot. Yeah, so finding that other access, knocking on that door, and she said, yeah, I got guys hunting here, but you can just walk through, you know, make sure you're walking over here and not bothering them, and yep. take it, that uh, as a win. Just seeing what somebody will allow you to do when you say that, I just want to get over here, mm-hmm. um, they are very apt to say yes. Uh, we've had very good s- luck with people saying yes. A lot of times if you're just saying, hey, I just want to, I want to access this property. 
and I just want to walk through yours. They're like, oh, okay, you know, you're not hunting it. A lot of times they're like, make sure your gun's not loaded, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. You and know. just like in my, in my scenario, when you do explain, because like she's like, oh, I have guys hunting here. Well, then when you talk to them and you explain why you want to do this, it's because it's shorter. It's not going to disturb the deer as much as it would be if I come the other way. So yeah, likely. everybody's hunting is going to be better if you can just squeeze in, you know, this yeah. way. So th- just try to look for another way or maybe... Um, not sure what your land setup is, but, you know, hopefully you got, like, maybe a creek running through there. Yeah. You can come in, um, you know, use the ag field to your advantage. Um, yeah, deer can't see through cornfields. We use those yeah. a lot, man. Yep. We walk on that, that, like I said, that there's a fence gap where two different properties, two different farmers own properties, and they always leave. They don't, they can't go right up to the barbed wire fence. There's always enough room to get in between the fence and the corn and just scoot right through there and... We do use like we utilize that a lot, and yeah. then when there's not beans, we hop on the other side of the fence and use the fence as cover. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just one thing, man, just pay attention to the wind on your access. Yeah. That's one thing. The last three years, we really dialed in, and it's helped us tremendously. Sometimes we don't even check cams if we ain't got the right. You just can't yeah check it. You yeah, just... as it gets closer to season, you know, we get more tense and rigid of yeah. of what we're doing, and we really want to check it when it's right. All right, Jason, Koo. is that Koo? Did I murder that? Q. Q. Yeah. Jason Q. What are you guys keen on during summer scouting? What signs still visible last fall? Potential food sources, beds, fresh and old, or just natural or man-made funnels? I'd say we're keen on a lot of that, what you're talking about, um, food areas, bedding. Um, We're not really hitting a lot of bedding during the summer. Um, We know where the does bed, and that's where we need to be. Um, We are not buck bed hunters early season, I wouldn't say. Um, We're getting closer and closer to that i would say we kind of did like we tried to last year and we yeah, struck out yeah you know swing it, and a miss yeah it's that's a very hard thing to do the guys that are doing it are super og because to get in there to find a deer for one and for two to get in there and not jump him out of the bed and hunt him and kill him early season i've done it a couple times off of deer that i knew were bedded but i found i didn't know that buck was bedding there i knew it was a buck bedding area and i went in there and hunted it. the guys that are like okay this buck's bedding here you know and mm-hmm. i'm gonna come in here and hunt him and they kill him that's that's super solid you cannot deny that at all and that's something that we haven't broke through to be able to do as hunters um that's something we were just talking about before we recorded that we're gonna start pressing in We're not going to pussyfoot the edges this year. We're going to go in and try to do that. We're going to try to do it. And I told, you know, we were talking, if we bump these deer, they're not going to leave that property. No. They're going to go where we want them in the rut because the does are there. So even if we mess up early season like we did last year, they're still going to be there during the rut, hopefully just like they were last year. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, even if you do bump these deer, you got a second chance if the property is big enough. Now, if you're hunting a small property like the last guy and you bump this deer out of its bed a couple times, I'm one of those guys that that it's over. That deer is not going to bed there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's a reason he's bedding there, and it's because he wants to be left alone. If you start going in there and messing with him. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're using a lot of funnels. Not really man-made funnels. More of like like we said, um, those those waterways in the fields. And if you realize something about our trail cams in the summer, they're all really easy to access areas most of the time because we're just trying to figure out if these deer made it and if we know where we can hunt them later in the year. This isn't saying that, okay, we got a buck now on this cam and he's utilizing this area. We might take it 150, 200 yards deeper into the woods and try to figure out, okay, can we get this deer in daylight? Um, But just to start, we're just running those edge cams, um, low pressure, easy to get. And uh, let you know if the deer are still in that area to are still alive to hunt. Yeah, got one more over there? Yeah. I think uh, I got them all off Facebook. All right, uh, this one comes in from David Weaver Creative. Shout out David Weaver. Um, how do you store all your trail cam intel from years past? Thoughts on vine mock scrapes? Are you worried about scent this time of year? Do you run minerals? And where do you like to run cams during the summer and why? So the first one is, how do you store all your trail cam intel from years past? So I like to have all of the pics that I've kept uh, sorted out by deer. And then um, 
I'll further break it down into, well, not break it down, but just within that folder, then I'll have, like, when I know it's a cold front, obviously it's got uh, your data strip on it. You know, I, I know that that was a cold front in October because it's 46 degrees. And then um, when a couple times there, when we were on Boonatown the first year, you know, I went back and was like, all right, you know, the 24th of October, uh, it was a cold front. It was a southwest wind and deers on the scrape, you know, and he come in from the downwind side. So I was like, okay, next year on some of these similar conditions, I'm, I want to try to key in on it. Um, ended up not having that scenario, but um, that is something that I try to do. Yeah, I like to keep them all on my computer most of the time. I keep my videos separate. Um, and I don't really separate bucks a lot. I separate properties and areas, I guess. I have like the private ground. It's all separated. I even keep stuff from the past, like five, six years ago. Uh, just cool videos or videos of a buck that I hunted that I never connected. And sometimes I watch those videos and you, you realize something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it might help you out further along and be like, oh man, this deer was doing this. You know, it was a mature deer. Maybe I should give this a shot. But um, that's how I normally do it. Um, I keep them all on my computer where I can look at them, click through them. And it's, it's awesome click through like, oh, big, yeah, I never killed that deer, never killed that deer. <laughs> yeah. And every now and then you're like, yeah, I got that one. You know what I mean? But uh, Yeah, but how many times have we been looking through like super old picks? You know, I'm talking four or five years old and just noticed something new and then tried to apply that to mm -hmm. now and, you know, benefit us. I mean, yeah. we've done that quite a few times. So... And looking through old pics is always fun. Yeah, it is. You're like, yeah, that deer kicked my ass. Yeah. What, what's his <laughs> other question? We don't use mineral or bait. Yep. Can't, can't do that. Um, vine mock scrapes. I've so. heard a lot of people use vine mock scrapes. That's something that we don't do. I tried rope for a while. Okay, luck on a couple of them. Um, we're not big scent guys. We don't use any scents. That's something that we might change this I would year say I'm, in our mock scrapes. I've got a couple of things that I want to... Yeah, we're going to try to spice up our mock scrape life and uh, try to go from that. But yeah, we don't use any vines. I know a lot of people do with huge success. Um, and so I think the reason that we don't do a lot of um, mock scrapes is because we have to go in there to, you know put some more sin in there and mm -hmm. we just don't like to be in there that much and yeah. you know it's just part of us tiptoeing around on the private yeah what was the last of it, rest of it? um where do you like to run cams during the summer and why uh, yeah, hit that think, one pretty good yeah hit that one pretty good all right you ready for this last one yeah all right how to target a buck without using trail cams on public land oh that's tough that is a that is a tough one i got a couple this is where to hunt, right? This is where to hunt. Yeah. Um, I got a couple. It's kind of radical, though. <laughs> Talk to people that hunt out there or hunt around there. Um, last year, me and homie did this. And once you start talking to someone, people love to show pictures of big deer. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the deer we had pictures of that he showed us. And then you're like, holy crap, this guy is hunting all the same deer we are. But... Um, you know, and one thing that was cool is, like, we didn't, like, go crash into his no. spot. Like, we just totally were like, hey, yeah, that's a good spot. We know from years past, bucks like to bed in there. And, yeah. I mean, we hunted on, maybe on the back side of that, but yeah. that's still 500, 600 yards away. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, we got to, you know, talking. And then you get you get an idea of what's there, what he's seen. And, and he's messaged us while we're working, like, giant just went past you, got right through your guys' area. Are you guys out? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, we're both working. So just... Create those relationships with other hunters. Um, drive around, look at those fields. There's multiple times that I've seen deer in fields. And is it um, is it going to give you success in the fall? Maybe, maybe not. But it does give you an idea that, okay, a big deer did like this area, so it might be low pressure. That's something I need to check out. But if I was going to go out there with no cams at all and everything, I would just be like, okay, where is the – where is the dumbest place to hunt out here where there's going to be no one else that's close to ag and close to private ground? And that's where I would start. And then just like us, west side, you just put an X after you hunt it for a couple of seasons. You just wipe out an X on there. You're like, okay, this is, oh, well, this is shit. I think you're talking about the deer. <laughs> no, no. The All west right. side of that. Yeah. You know? North side, 
X that out. Yeah. No, this is shit. You know what I mean? And then without trail cameras, just hunting and you'd be able to target it down. And then just like we keep saying this, we're not saying people say past history, which I think it's confusing to people. Like you hear a lot of people say day to day. It's he was there the 7th of November. He's going to be there at 730. Mm, yeah. It's not the same for us. It's he was there in the rut chasing does. We got him on trail camera picture. We seen him. He'll be there in the He'll rut. He'll be there in the rut. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to hopefully that your dates are matching up. Um, that's what we we see on past data. And if you're seeing a bunch of giant buck sign in an area, more than likely there's giant bucks utilizing that sometime of the year. And if you're not running trail cameras, the only way for me to feel like, for you to figure it out, just got to hunt it mm-hmm. and go off of, okay, I seen this going on. And then go back to the truck. And when that guy says, hey, did you see anything? Yeah, say, hey, I had a pretty good hunt, you know, and then that guy said, you know, did you see anything? And then you have a kind of idea where he walked, you know what I mean? So you'd be like, well, maybe it's good that way too. So that's one thing I think people on public don't do. And that's something that we did do, which is probably weird to a lot of people. We just, we're just friendly dudes. I want everybody to kill Big Buck. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, yeah. I want, I want to kill Big Buck more than I want everybody else. There's certain people I want. I want Nick Brown just to kill a monster. <laughs> He's been hunting so long and never killed a monster. You know what I mean? I, I'd love him to just kill a giant off there, off the ground. Yeah, it'd be sick. It'd be sick, you know what I mean? But other than that, like, I want me and homie to kill it before anybody else, just like everybody everybody else does, but guys give away. I'm not away. pissed off when yeah. they kill, you Guys know? give away a lot of intel, you know what I mean? So, and like I said, Magnum, a lot of guys know he's alive. A lot of guys <laughs> seen him last year. A lot yeah. of trail cam pictures, you know what I mean? So, you can't be selfish because that deer's going to die eventually. I'm going to say there's five guys that i know yeah. off the top of my head yeah that know he's alive so. yeah do deer know when there's a leap year if they're showing up on the seventh yeah i don't know year? maybe they do yeah it's a leap year I'm yeah, say, yeah it's a leap i know year. a lot of people say that but that's something that we've <laughs> actually targeted on yeah to, it's and it's it's 100 percent false to us yeah i took uh two years in a row i had october 23rd shooter bucks in daylight so i'm like screw it took the morning off work went out hunted didn't see a deer yeah so similar conditions just because the trail cam's there doesn't mean that you didn't bump that deer who's feeding on that field when you walked in and now he's not going to be in that area or that deer is dead. You know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. so much stuff that could happen. But Yeah, going back to Eric's question is like with no with no cams, no intel really, like you just got to be out there. Mm-hmm. You got to be out there right now. Yeah. You got to be out there whenever any, you can be out any there. Any piece of data that you can get. Get some high quality binos and just yeah. get out there. Yeah, get out there and get try the thermocell and get out there. Yeah, the bugs, dude. Summertime bugs. <laughs> Cockaburs and bugs. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we hope you guys picked up something in this episode. Um, hopefully there was some value to there. There's a lot of a lot of questions about losing bucks, and I think that's a lot of people struggle during the summer, and we kind of touched on that a couple times, but I would say basically what we did is we gave you all of our intel for how we get close to these deer without killing them. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do. We always, we always, and sometimes we kill the big ones, you know what I mean? But every year people are like, how are you guys getting all these summertime pictures of giants? You know what I mean? I'm like, "Eh, well, we just run in cams where we historically know they're good. And then when we find a new area, the same thing goes back. It's not like if you're on a new piece of ground and the other piece of ground you're like, well, I got pictures in that on that piece mm-hmm. in this same kind of scenario. Put a cam there. And more than likely, big bucks like to do the same thing other big bucks like to do. You know what I mean? So, And we had this scenario come up here with a buddy of ours. Like, he picked up a new piece, and he's had he's got this piece behind his house. So he's been hunting behind his house, we'll say, for six years. You know kind of what's going on there. Like, you don't really – there's not going to be anything new really come up right there so take your cams that you would put there and get on the new piece to get more intel there to see if you can kill early there yeah you know see if if something's going to come through randomly you know like boonertown for us early season no No. we're going to utilize way more cams on public than we are going to be out there just because it's you know and we picked up we picked up a new piece of public this year i scouted it two days during the winter I feel like we got a good chance to kill out there. Never ran a cam on it in my life. 
I probably should just not run a cam on it and go out there. That's, <laughs> just go out there. I can't do it, though. I got to yeah, I gotta right? have a cam on. I already picked two cam spots. I'm like, cam here, cam here, easy access. I'm going to get access from a person I know to walk the fence line, to get on there, to pull it. You got to go through all these processes of trying to get in there, and you're just dodging eggshells is what you're doing. Like, if I do this, this is going to be chaotic. If I do this, it's going to be a little bit harder to get to, but it's the right thing to do. So. Uh, something we do have this year is a couple more cell cams. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, more cell cams. that's, uh, that's gonna be huge, huge for us. Yeah. And, uh, the only thing I could think for Booner town early season is to have a mock scrape in there. Yeah. And if we know it's last usually breath. shout shit. out last breath, man, they've been killing them on yeah. mock scrapes forever. So. Getting awesome videos, yeah. you know, and, uh, building that story, getting that deer in there, you know, three, four times in a week. Yeah, I know. And, yeah. uh, That'd be that'd be killer for us to have, yeah. you know. So uh, that's about the only thing I can think for for trying that. And yeah. main thing is this time of year, you always just want to try to. This is the time of year to really try and get better, put the effort in. Because we say that this scouting right now doesn't mean a lot, but every piece of knowledge that you do have is going to help you in the end during season. Because during season, you're like, ah, I'm going to get a cam hung over there gonna do it and then season comes and you're hunting and you're too busy and then you never put a cam there and it's the end of november and you're like damn it I sh- if i had that thing in there in october beginning of october i would have all this intel from the rut but with us with kids when it's time to hunt it's time to hunt like yeah we're not we're pulling cams at night on the way out you know what <laughs> i mean we're not making days we're like i'll pull cam on wednesday because i got two hours if we got two hours we're hunting you know what i mean so like just think about this if you're 30 years old you got 30 ruts left, you know, Yeah. like really getting after it, if that, you know, yeah. like you just say 30 ruts. So then literally every summer that goes by, every October that goes by, it's gone. Yeah. Like that intel, that information, that extra scouting trip you could have done, like it's gone, dude. It's gone. And you only have 30, 30 more of that. Potentially, yeah. To, I mean, to do it yeah. over again. You can only watch a giant in a bean field full velvet 30 times yeah you know what i mean 30 season you know 30 different bucks out there 30 years you know right. what I mean? so what he's saying is wake up early do some scouting it's gonna make your season better try to leave a legacy always do the right thing and wipe the legacies out